spiritual the spiritual and pastoral needs of the people in the urban areas that's why in the roman chapter of 1256 the mendicant model was applied to the order of saint augustine as the final process of its organization okay so let's proceed though augustine died in 430 a.d during the vandal siege of hippo his rule and works were saved since they were brought to continental europe and they were kept in monasteries they were kept no these are important the monasteries preserved and copied the works of god especially his rule that is a historical fact okay next no the spread of the rule of saint august in continent that is western europe that is france spain italy england etc no were already being propagated between the 7th and the 11th centuries. And they were being adopted by religious communities. No? Especially of what we call the, we might say, an organization, a religious of community of clerics living under the guidance of their diocesan bishop. And these are called the canon, they were called the canons regular of St. Augustine. As the first millennium came to an end, that is the year 1000, the fervor of this life no, of the cathedral, no, of the diocesan clergy began to wane. And the cathedral clergy bega began to live independently of one another. At the start of the second millennium, that is 1200, we might say, there was a revival of in interest in the stricter form of clerical life. And several groups of the canons, these are the canonry, a group of diocesan priests living in the cathedral, were established under various disciplines. Under the bishop, they followed the rule of St. Augustine. Thus, the canons regular no, were born. What are the examples of these canons regular? They are the congregation in Ravenna, founded by Blessed Peter of Onestis about 1100 AD. The Norbertines, the instruction contained in the rule, in Augustine's rule, formed the basis of the rule that, in accordance with the decree of the Lateran Synod of 1059, was adopted by canons who desired to practice a common apostolic life. These are called the canons regular of St. Augustine. So, not only did the diocesan clergy who wanted to live in community under the direction of the bishop following the rule of Augustine, the medieval hermits, especially in Tuscany, were already adopting the rule of St. Augustine. No? But the problem was they were not, they are we might, independent eremitical communities. Okay? So that's the reason why the church had to intervene. Because there is a need for religious men and women to serve the apostolate in the church of the 13th century, which we call the rise of the mendicant orders, the mendicant movement. What is the word, does the word mendicant mean? Okay. Mendicant from the Latin word mendicare, which means to beg. This is a general designation given to those new religious associations arising in the 13th century as a response to the poor brethren and depending upon the arms for complete support. Excuing even communal property, the mendicant orders were not bound by the vow of stability unlike the Benedictines. Okay? And place there, we might say, common sources, no? Because their ministry is exercised outside of the cloister, which was approved in Canon Number no. 22 of the Second Council of Lyons in 1274, and establishes one of these four mendicant orders, such as De Yuri. This is a, an autonomous community with a juridical identity, and they were the Dominicans, the Franciscans, the Carmelites, and the Augustinians. This was defined in the Second Council of Lyons in 1274. In the narrow sense of the term, they are called mendicant orders. And what are the, we might say, characteristics of these mendicant orders? No, These were the first one, 1210, the Franciscans, 1216, the, the Dominicans, 12, 
47, the Carmelites. They were a contemplative group, hermits, who were expelled from Palestine because of the Muslim, we might say, occupation of Palestine. And they submitted themselves to the Holy See, and the Holy See turned this hermit group into a mendicant order only in 1247. So what are the basic characteristics of this mendicant model as we were describing or discussing a while ago? First, mobility. Unlike the, unlike the Benedictines that, has the vow, the, 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 that do, they have the vow of stability, they stay, live, and die in the monastery where they are assigned. The mendicant orders has mobility. They could be transferred from one house to another without difficulty. Second, their obedience to the Holy See through their legitimate superiors. Third, learning. They studied in universities. They prepared themselves for the urban apostolate. And they are called an apostolic fraternity. They are no longer called as Lord or Dom, like the, Domin the, the, the Benedictines, but they are called Frater. Frater, Frater. In Latin, which means brother, Fry in Spanish. Kapatid in Tagalog. So, it is a fraternity. Kapatiran ang mendicant orders. No? So, when the Holy See was, was successful in turning these groups under the supervision of the Holy See, the Franciscans in 1210, the Dominicans in 1216, the Carmelites in 1247, now they were focusing on the, their attention on this independent hermit groups living in the mountains and hills of Tuscany in central Italy. And they were following the rule, most of them were following the rule of St. Augustine. And the Holy See, since they were successful in forming the mendicant orders, now they turned their attention to these hermit groups and they were called the Small Union under Pope Innocent IV. Okay. So Pope Innocent IV, in his papal document, Incumbit Nobis, ordered that some Tuscan hermits no, to unite and, and follow the rule of Augustine as one. And this, was, this papal bull was issued on December 16, 1243. This is what other historians would call the small union, the union of independent hermit groups in Tuscany to form one religious order under the rule of of Saint Augustine. No? With this small union that was a, it was on the next year on March 31, the Tuscan Hermits held a founding chapter in Rome under the guidance of their protector Cardinal No sound. No sound. No sound, please. No, wala po yung audio. No sound. No sound. And number five, we already had the Hermes of Tuscany that became already okay. the Order of St. Augustine in its embryonic stage. The other four were the Hermits of Blessed John the Good, the Hermits of Bretino, the Hermits of William of Monte Fava of Malavalle, and the Hermits of Monte Favalle. He invited these other four to join with the Tuscan Hermits, thus having what we call the Great Union. That's why he issued a papal bull or document called Licet Ecclesia Catholicae under Pope Alexander VI, confirmed the union of the above-mentioned eremitical groups that was formed into one profession and regular observance of the order of hermits, because many of them are still hermits, of St. Augustine. But they were given time to reconsider if they would really like to join or they could leave. No? They were given options. So the hermit congregations renounced their autonomy and banded together to bring new life to a new religious order known as the Order of Hermits of St. Augustine with its own unique name, unique habit and governance and observances and objectives. But some 
hermits back out like the hermits of William of St. William and the hermits of Monte Favale they left the union because they maintained their Benedictine rule so they were following the rule of St. Benedict and they opted to leave the union but some of the members opted to stay behind and join the union they were given freedom and because of this no the order of the hermits of saint augustine we might say was established firmly under the guidance of the holy see that's why in this period the year 1256 the spiritual identity of the order had two foundations thanks to the movements and initiative of these two popes innocent the fourth and alexander the fourth so what are these two these two foundations first the person of Augustine whom it received its concept of religious life became the model, became the patron. Ah, so, see, it was the Holy See who decided that Augustine would be their model and patron in their order. Why? Because in the document, it emphasizes the Augustinian model of religious life, that is interior search for God and community life according to the teachings of Augustine. So that's it. So the Holy See, the two popes, Alex, Innocent IV and Alexander, gave these, these friars, these hermits, no, a model whom they could emulate and follow. No? This is Augustine. No? This, was, this was imposed on them and they willingly accepted that Augustine as their spiritual founder. But the historical founder of the Augustinians, no, as we know today, they were two popes, Innocent IV and Alexander IV. That's why up to now, because they have this, we might say, two papal, two popes who were their founders, up to now, the Augustinians are in charge of the papal sacristy in the Vatican. Up to now. And even their main general curia is located within the jurisdiction of the Holy See, because their foundations was under were their foundations were under the guidance of these two popes, Innocent Pope Innocent the Fourth and Alexander the Fourth. And the second identity, since the model is mendicant, the mendicant movement by which the Order of Saint Augustine was molded into, thus the order of Satan became an apostolic fraternity like the Franciscans, Dominicans, and Carmelites ahead of them. They are called, it is an apostolic brotherhood. And these are the two identities that defined the order of St. Augustine in 1256. That's why, as we have seen it, there is no connection between the Monastic community is founded by Augustine in North Africa and the Augustinians that we know today. So, this connection that they tried to mend was based on legends, but historically speaking, they were, there, there was no connection. No? In other words, Augustine was only their spiritual founder and model, not historical founder. The historical founders of the Order of St. Augustine were two popes, Pope Innocent IV and Alexander IV. That's why the mendicant way of life no, became the matrix, what we say today, no, the, 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 the guidelines, no, the guide of how the Augustinians live their religious life as inspired by St. Augustine, but following the mendicant model. So what is to be a mendicant at that time? being a new way of being religious during the 13th century. First, they call themselves brothers, fratres. Second, they live in small houses between 10 to 15 members in the community called conventus, a convent, but no, located in a city. They mingle with the people and they preach and heard confessions and they assisted, assisted the secular clergy, especially in preaching retreats and hearing confessions during Lenten season. So this is the mendicant model. No? Let us continue. What is this mendicant model all about? They were not attached to a particular house. That's why there is mobility. 
they are assigned there for a certain time and they will be transferred to another house. They live from their work and from the arms of the faithful, not fruits of landed properties. No? In other words, what they receive will be given to the common fund and they are dependent on the common fund. They wanted to experience the problems of the people. That's why their conventus, convent, friary, are within the friaries, are within the cities. And they are willing to extend help to the diocese of the parish priests with regard to confessions and other celebration of the sacraments. And above all, they insisted upon preaching the gospel through a poor and sacrificial way of life. So these are the mendicant model that was integrated into the order of St. Augustine. And in order to see its fruits, no, the constitution of the order were redacted by two Tuscan hermits who joined the order, no, who became the members of the order. And they are the Augustine redactors of the first constitution of the order of St. Augustine. Who were they? Clement of Osimo and Augustine of Tarrano. No? That's why in 1290, they gathered in their friary in Ratisbon, now Regensburg, Germany, no? where the extant primitive constitution of the Augustinian order no? was approved. No? The constitutions were approved by the general chapter held in Ratisbon, now Regensburg, Germany in 1290. And it gave the juridical structure of the order from its, we might say, origin, formation, the vows, up to the juridical structure of how the order should be conducted and organized itself according to its juridical structure from general to provincial, provincial to the, we may say, local priors of each community belonging to each province. So this is the first, no, we may say, uh, example of the primitive Augustinian way of life that was legislated in the primitive Augustinian constitution of 1290. Okay, let's continue. So, in every congregation, there should be fruits. A tree is judged by its fruit. Okay, every religious institute must bear good fruits, and such good fruits are the members themselves who, responding to the call of God, made them visible signs of the Holy Spirit working in the church. So, how can you say that this person is a faithful Augustinian, uh, we might say, brother or sister? So, the common visible signs present among the saints of the order are the following. Life of prayer. No? It is a manifestation of the love of God. Life of conversion. It is a manifestation of love for God. Fidelity to the rule, love for that is the love of the for the common life and the apostolate, no manifestation for the love of the church. Now these are the four indicators of the saints of the Augustinian order in the Augustinian family. And the first saint who was who underwent this canonical process was Saint Nicholas of Tolentine, who died in 1305. No, he joined the Augustinian order while a young man after hearing the inspired preaching of Reginaldo de Monterubiano, the local prior of the place. And he uh, joined the monastery of St. Angelo. Okay? What is interesting about no, St. Nicholas, no, he was a priest and a religious but full of charity towards his brothers. No, he visited the sick and the needy and he was noted, noted preacher of the gospel. He gave special attention to those who have fallen away from the church. No, He facilitated their conversion and people considered him a miracle worker. He often fasted and performed other works of penance and spent long hours in prayer. So the four indicators are of an Augustinian saint no? are present in the life of St. Nicholas of Talentine. Another, we might say, Holy Augustine was Blessed Simon of Cassia, who died in 1348. No? And he advocated gospel simplicity and community based on Christian love and was known for his powerful preaching and desire to form Christ in everyone. Okay. Then we have St. Rita of Cassia, who died in 1457. 
known as the saint of the impossible and the and peacemaker. Rita, her real name was Margarita, no, a baptismal name, but called Rita, overcame many difficulties throughout her life. She had a generous love and a deep sense of penance, and she was able to bring about peace between rival families and heal divisions between hostile groups of people in Kasia. Then if you have the, we might say, Santa Rita of Kasia received her stigma on her on the forehead. We have another stigmatist, another Augustinian nun, Claire of Monte Falco, who had her, we might say, stigmata in her heart. No? An August, noted Augustinian nun and noted for her devotion to the passion of Christ. That's why she was called no, St. Clair of the Cross of Monte Falco. So the stigmata in her heart became a symbol of his deep love of the cross, his deep love of the cross of Christ. No? Because of the great love for the cross of Jesus, she used to say that she bore the cross in her heart. And after her death, a post-mortem examination revealed that her heart did indeed contain the representation of the cross and other symbols of Christ's suffering and death. Her remains, including her incorrupted heart, are still in the uh, convent church of Montefalco in Italy. So these are the indicators, no? some of the indications of holiness no? of Augustinian men and women responding to the call of holiness. This is the reason why the church is inviting us to give more witness no, for the love of neighbor and the love of God in the Augustinian way. But however, in every institution, we have to be aware, every religious order had to undergo crisis. And the crisis would help reflect how much have been many of the members of the order had gone astray and wishing to go back to the primitive observance of the rule of St. Augustine as intended by Pope Innocent IV in 1244, as intended by Pope Innocent Alexander IV in 1256. Thus, no, between 1309 and 1509, there were movements within the Augustinian order who wanted to renew their eremitical, we might say, way of life. That's why there are two important historical uh, points to consider here. No? The first, there, there will be a reform movement. And this reform movement is also, or the reform movements are also found within the religious order and the Augustinian order was not exempted. This reform movement existed even before the birth of the Spanish Augustinian Recollection in 1588. Number two, the Augustinian Recollection was born from the desire of the Augustinian reformed observance in Castile, Spain of a more rigorous, rigorous and perfect way of life. So these are the two points to consider that before the Augustinian Recollection, the order was already undergoing, we might say, inner reform. That's why there were, there were two kinds of two reform movements in the Augustinian order and any religious order between 1309 and 1509. What are they? The Pre-Reformation. No? It is a reform that took the place from the 14th century to the middle of the 16th century, and it is called the Observantine Reform. Why Observantine? Because with the congregation as its juridical structure, we call it the Congregation of Observants, yet tied still to the Mother Order, no? with semi-autonomous status. While the post time, that is 1565 onwards to 1592, the post time reform beginning with the second half of the 16th century, taking the form of what we call the Recollect Movements and the Discalced Group of Reformed Religious. That would become a, a, an out, with, that would become independent religious orders in the future. But let us start with the Congregation of the Observance and in the as experienced by the order of this is pre-1517. 
pre-Luther, Martin Luther experience. Okay. The Observantines. So what caused, now what are the causes that led to the emergence of the Observantine groups? No? First, there was a lingering desire to for an idealizing of the eremitical or hermit style of life that had existed even before the great union of 1226. Many would like to go back to that ideal way of life. Second, with the passage of time, the simplicity and especially the, sever the severity involved in the religious life was being eroded by granting privileges and dispensations. And because of this privilege and dispensation, there was laxity in discipline. This laxity and discipline caused no, destructive, no, became destructive forces that of endless exception to the rule and the ruination that caused by neglect of true poverty and the spirit of selfishness which sought personal comfort and individualism were, were gaining strength in the Augustinian order whose ideal, ideal was the common good. So many Augustinians were aware that the order need, we might say, a inner reform, that all should be treated as, as brothers and there should be no exemption from the rule. Thus, the absurd that the moment was born. That's why one of the most important things that we have to consider, no? this reform-minded Augustinians emerged in every nation, in every province of the order. It, was, it is present except in France and in England. Okay? Good religious no, who desired to go back to the primitive observance of the rule, no, avoiding exemptions and no, avoiding laxity in the observance of religious life that uh, created lawlessness in religious life, were gaining ground. In other words, they wanted reform. That's why in an area when not every pope or prior general was resistant to the granting of documents no, of author authorizing privileges, Many of the reformers pleaded with their generals to have this observantine movement be legitimately recognized. And they were given that recognition thanks to their perseverance. That's why, what are the characteristics of the observance of St. Augustine that would lead later on to the recollection, Augustine recollection in Spain in 1588? They were already present. But the recollection wanted more. That's why it is not that is not correct. It is not. It is not correct to say that the Augustinian recollection came to be because they need to reform the order of the uh, order of Saint. They were already being reformed by the observants. Well, in fact, many of the members of the early recollection were observantine Augustinians. So, what were these characteristics? The observants hoped to move forwards by effect, effecting a return to the exact observance of the Augustian vows and constitution. That's why they have a fourth vow to faithfully observe the Augustinian constitutions. They had the same habit. They have the same, we might say, discipline. But one thing that makes them distinct is the fourth vow. Faithfully observing the Augustinian constitutions to the letter. Avoiding laxity and privileges. Above all, they are bound themselves to practice perfect common life in which no one called anything as their own. Okay? So, there were reactions, no? Frequently, this true way of life was bitterly attacked, but many were able to create in the, uh, autonomous provinces in order to maintain this way of life. That's why it is called the Congregation of the Observance, which the recollects would follow afterwards okay so the governance of this congregation congregations is distinguished from them from the provinces even though they are congregations a province within the province this congregation of the observance uh, were placed under the supervision of the prior general so it is a semi it has a se se semi autonomous status within the order this admittedly created many orders within the Augustinian order. And it, is, it was the same with the Franciscans and the Dominicans. Now that existed, existed up to the 20th century. So, that's why one of the things that the 
observantine would always insist it is the regular observance of the rule. Observing, consistently observing the rule of St. Augustine and the constitution of the order without exemption. The effort was to kindle the desire of returning to the primitive fervor that had characterized the first century of the order's life and to do so by following the common the common discipline of the order that was being that was practiced in 1244 and 1256 what are they number one a more intense union with god through more frequent reception of the sacraments a better prayer life and more time devoted to prayer another point of this observant time reform no rejection of rather frequently given individual and communal dispensation from the vow of poverty and the common life and these are concretized in the following observance, common life and enclosure, no? the clo cloister. Second, the austerity of life. Now, this second ideal, which is, ascetic, which is ascetical, is one of the marks of the Augustinian observantine, observantine reform movement. And this austerity of life of the Augustinians of, Augustinian observance took two forms, no, concrete forms that were being practiced at that time. What were these two concrete forms no, that were taken by the Augustinians? So this kind of austerity of life. First, there was a complete sharing of possessions in the, in the exclusion of every kind, uh, of every, we might say, keeping what is called private property on the part of the friar. So they were not allowed or they renounce everything and they would give everything what they have in their ministry, which we call today, no, the we might, honorarium or stipend, it would be surrendered to the common coffers. And the friars, no, they even renounced no, keeping inheritance, which was at, then, at that time being observed by some because they received dispensations. So the observant time friars of the Augustinian order would renounce everything. And if they receive money through their ministry, it would be surrendered to the common fund. So this is the kind what we call the poverty that they were observing. The second form of austerity of life that they were observing was that they practice fasting and abstinence, no? as days appointed by the Augustinian constitution. So that's the reason why they keep this austerity of fasting and abstinence as required by the constitution without any exemption. And of course, not they practice the silentium magnum. There will be a time in the community that silence would be observed in the evening until Early, early part of the morning before the start of their, we might say, liturgy of the hours. And lastly, the practice of physical discipline, which is the wearing of hair shirts and self-flagellation, which the constitution of the Augustinians never imposed, though it was not even prohibited. So this is a voluntary, we might say, physical practice of what we call penance on the part of the of the augustinian observant prior so these are only voluntary practices to discipline the body and to subdue the body against we might say the urgings of sin this was practiced at that time now let us go proceed now who are the sons which are who are notable in their in their contribution in the history of the church and of the augustinian order no and these are the things that they are given, we might say, emphasis. Anong emphasis nito? They are giving emphasis on prayer and meditation. That's why this prayer and meditation by the sons of the observantine movement were also emphasized that they would meditate with prolonged hours during the silentium magnum. And they will only use their study in only for the preparation of the priesthood and avoid honorific academic titles now that's why the juridical structure of the observant and reform no as we know that they are very they observing this rigorous way of life no were called 
congregation. So they are a congregation within an order. So they are semi-autonomous. No, The superiors are under the prior general of the Augustinians in Rome. And there is what we call the observant, observantine province and the province of the observants with their own observantine prior provincial. They are the ones governing the order, the province within the order, but no, under the observantine, we might say, regulation. And these are called congregations. That's why this was experimented in the monastery in Lecceto, Italy. This is the, it became the monastery in Lecceto, Italy, as I have delineated for, for all of you, to all of you, are, is the model of the, of the, of the observant time movement within the Augustinian order. And this called the Erem, or the Hermitage of Lecceto, became the model of all reformed Augustinian monasteries. Within the order of St. Augustine, the monastery of Lecceto was regarded as the living expression of the desire for the spiritual reform and renewal within the order. And many monasteries would follow the example of the hermitage of Lecceto in Italy. That's why it became the official model of the observatory movement within the order, and this was reinforced and repeated decrees by the repeated decrees of the general chapters of the Augustinians in 1394, 1397, and in 1400. And many of these, we might say, reform, reformed, we might say, monasteries had sons and became contributors to the reform of the church and of the order. Okay? What were they? Who were they rather? Not what were they? Who were they? No? Giles of Viterbo, no? the prior general of the order between 1507 and 15, we might say 15. No? And he became a cardinal and he opened, we might say, the important, we might say, uh, important, we might say, the Fifth Lateran Council in Rome. And in Germany, of course, we know him, Martin, he belonged to the Observantine Augustinians in Saxony, Germany, but he left the church. Now we know that history. Other sons of the Observantine movement was Girolamo Seripando, who became prior general of the order from 1539 to 1551. And he supported the movements of reform within the Observantine order in Spain. And of course, we have the brother, the patron saint of Augustinian brother, Blessed Grazia Cotor, an Augustinian who died in 1508. That's why my brothers and sisters, no, these are some of the sons of the Observantine movement who were attempting through their examples of the fidelity that they had to maintain in living out the spirituality and the rule of St. Augustine. In Spain, we have St. Thomas of Villanova. No, he was a member of the Augustinian Observantine movement in Castile, Spain. And in, uh, we might say he was the, when he became provincial, he was able to send the first Augustinians to Mexico. And he initiated a reform of the Observantine that would lead to the, cre to the birth of the recollection, Augustinian recollection later on. We have St. John Sahabgun in Toledo, no, in Spain. And we might say he was a peacemaker and works for justice. No? That uh, he was able to maintain peace in spite of the fact that he was a great preacher and uh, uh, he had a great love for the Eucharist. Then we have St. Alonso de Orozco. No? At the, we might say, an old age, he was, as we might say, an example of the observant movement in Madrid. No? He wanted to become a missionary, but when he was traveling from Spain to Mexico, he had a severe sickness of arthritis and he had to go back to Spain. But in spite of that, no, he found his true vocation as a preacher and a writer. And in 1566, he founded the monastery in Talavera de la Reina in Castile, Spain, but it became a novitiate in 1569. But on October 19, 1589, the monastery were, 
was given to the Augustinian recollection that was approved at that time in the chapter of Toledo in 1588. So the monastery that he, he founded became the cradle of the Augustinian recollection that would be born or that was born on December 5, 1588. So with these reform movements called the Observantine Augustinians, no? Let us have some pointers here no? to remind us of who were they and what were, 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 what were their, their contributions no? in the development of the Augustinian recollection. First, no? the Augustinian order in Spain was undergoing reform before the birth of the Augustinian recollection. And they were members of the Observantine congregation in Spain. And many Augustine embraced this observantine way of life and became Augustinian observants. This is the second point. And third point, it is wrong to deduce that the Augustinian recollection was born in order to reform the Augustinian order. So it is a wrong notion that when the recollection was born, it's intended to reform. The or that is a wrong notion. The order, the Augustinian order in Spain was already undergoing series of reform called the observant time reform. But who were the, we might say, Augustinian recollects? And this is the fourth point no, in our history of the reform movements within the order. On the contrary, many Augustinian observants in Spain wanted a more austere and perfect way of life. They had no intention of reforming the order because the order of the Augustinians in Spain was already undergoing serious reform. But many Augustinian observants wanted a more austere and perfect way of life. And this, we might say, common aspiration of these Spanish observantine Augustinians would lead to the birth of the Augustinian recollection in 1588. So thus, with this, no, we conclude that the Augustinian recollection in Spain were initiated by the Augustinian observance no, of the province of Castile. And it will be the next talk, the birth of the Augustinian recollects on December 5, 1588.